Hey Austin, this is Jacob. Uh, thanks for thanks for subbing on Thursday. Yay! It's one hell of a day. The sub plan reflects that. Um, this is the lovely craft room, art studio, storage space of uh, our lovely one bedroom here in the city, um, aka a glorified closet. For the first graders, we are going to be working with uh, some of the stuff that Osjemeos did when they they got together with Barry McGee. This uh, San Francisco street artist, yay, he started off doing street work, made the move into the gallery system, uh, but while he was still doing street work, he was a student at Art Institute in San Francisco in 1983, he took a trip down to Sao Paulo and ran into, met up with, Otavio and Gustavo Pandolfo, and they collaborated, and there's a direct influence on, well, the work of the brothers and the work that uh, Barry McGee was doing, there's a definite parallel there, but so some of this rings true for both artists, but it's kind of cool. What you're going to have as part of your prep is a bunch of pre-cut sponges. Some diamonds, straight up diamonds. Some little, what do you call those, parallelograms? Yeah, parallelograms, why not? Uh, quick, I've got a dish of water here. Don't tell Juan it's this close to the laptop. I've got three, ram three ramekins. Don't tell Emily that I'm using them for tempera paint. Uh, Yay, of temper paint. Three colors per table should be plenty. I say dealer's choice. You choose. Luckily, draw who gets assigned where. First graders don't have assigned seats. Um, as part of your prep, I'd say have the paints ready to go at, at the tables. Just you know, have them poured out. I've got a few dishes set out for you already. May need to scramble and find some more. Um, Sue is always a good bet with those little uh, plastic containers they use for veg and all that. But so, the lovely flat dried out sponges, hit the water, hit the water, hit the water, magically become awesome shapes, real sponges, hooray for pre-cut, hooray for pre-cut, hooray, hooray for cutting it ahead of time. I've got some orange in my fingers already. The nice thing about having a dish of water at each table is also going to allow students who, depending on the mood, depending on how the group's doing, if visiting another table to say, oh, you've got red, I really want red, that way they can rinse out their sponge before making the move. But the way this works, is I'm thinking, is today is the staging for the next day. Students will, so now that you've got your three sponges that fit together like so, three pieces, right, yay. I'd say each student should pick one or two to start with. It's, they're going to be different one or two, but if by picking two, are there these? or those, or these, uh-oh, uh, ah, keeping it straight. The relationship remains clear, and you see where the other one go, where the other one fits in. I'm going to show a little both, so I'm going to start with these two guys. Starting with one shape, starting with the other, I'm going to start with, let's see, ooh, purple. I'm going to put that down in the uppermost corner of my paper. I'm going to set it down, I'm going to give it a push, I'm going to give it a lift. Hooray. That's the cool mark I get. The reason why we're, taking, we're doing this with a relationship of two is that then I'm going to come in with, and this is where it gets tricky because you want to keep that relationship the same. If I've got purple on this side, I want to make sure that oh, I'm lined up correctly for the next one. This guy's going down next. I'm going to leave, in fact, I'll just leave that in the purple for right now. I'm going to have this guy don't go down boop into the green. I, you don't need to push it very hard, just let it hit it. You'll get pretty good coverage. In fact, too much is not a great thing. You can brush it off a little bit, give it a dip dip. Yeah, I don't like how much... Yeah, boom. Line it up right where it would fit. Smudging of colors is going to happen, but, you know, we can dodge that bullet by taking our time. Ha ha ha, first graders. Boom. Now we have a second mark. How cool is that? I'm going to repeat this pattern a couple of times and show how the next bit happens. All right. All right, all right. Actually, oh yes, I am going to repeat the pattern. Had an idea, I decided to switch it. I'm going to show this a little bit. So these wings, or whatever you want to call them, are going to continue for a bit. Ugh, it looks cool. It looks so cool. I haven't done this kind of project in a while, so it's cool to see it work again. Boom. Never done it with these guys, but... Always cool to see a plan come together. Remember that time when, years ago, I tried that thing and it worked out great? I wonder if it would work again. Boom. And even if the colors aren't totally solid, that's okay. I think I mentioned it in the lesson plan. There's no such thing as perfect in the art studio. 
This little mantra, I think, helps get the kids out of their own heads and more willing to experiment. It also helps with the perfectionists, and it takes the pressure off of the demonstration where, oh no, it didn't go exactly right. That's okay. Uh, I've got three of these bad boys now, and yeah, they're starting to angle a little bit, but we're already seeing the created geometric pattern, the three, dim the three dimensions of it. The last little bit, the uh, rectangle, or the, sorry, the diamond, is just going to sell it that much more. Um, starting on the top edge, starting from a corner and working on the top edge really does help to anchor the whole thing to keep you straight and consistent. It's bound to veer off. There's going to be kids, it's a hand-eye thing, it's a fine motor thing. It's going to get a little wacky. Encourage the kids to stick with it. Um, they're going to want to freak out a little bit. If we, if it's not a big deal to us, it's not a big, it makes it less of a big deal to them. I'm going to sneeze. Pardon me. This is gross. <coughs> That's gross. Okay. Uh, making sure I'm using the right edge. Yep. Orange. Stick it in. Boom. Ooh, can I go two on one? Let's find out. Two on one dip. Yeah, I can. Come back in. I'm going to do my tops. Uh, top edges. Oh. Mm, excuse me. Actually, I'm going to do this guy first. All right. So as we see, it's totally starting to work. These top edges, these whites that are going to have to overlap, you're going to have those occasionally on the edges. Well, yeah, they're going to come up on the edges. Save those for last. Uh, it's going to cause pa uh, paint to get on the table paper. That's A-OK. -okay. It's just a bummer for the student who's moving their paper around a lot. They're going to get a lot of smear on the back, and that's going to make a bigger mess. Um, we do have two, we do have classes back to back, so paint on the tables is gonna happen. The nice part with the kindergarten stuff is they're putting the the white side of their box on the table, so we're gonna paint over that anyway. And the next group up of the first grade, hopefully it'll get a chance to dry before they start painting. Uh, we're gonna try to minimize it, but it's gonna happen, and art's messy. So then the nice part is we can come back in and plug in the rest, and this is where confusion is gonna happen. We're keeping your left and your right. What color did you have on the left? Left is relative. Uh, matching up your purples and your greens. Matching up whatever your colors are. That way it, it becomes a pattern. Skip a skip a skip a skip a. Right. I'm gonna take my time and I hope it works. Boom. Boom. Riding my newfound success with doing multiple presses from one dip. Look at that. I got three out of one. That's excellent. I'm going to switch over to green because it's cool. Because why not? It's awesome. Give it a push. If colors bleed or blend together, that's going to happen. Colors overlap and get a little murky, that's going to happen. Um, if it gets really bad on the sponge itself, like if Miss Day, the colors are all wonky, dip it in the water, squeeze, squeeze. It's clean again. No problem. Uh-oh. And sometimes you just got to force it. And that's okay, too. Yep, muscled that one in there. All right, plop that back in. Throw in a little bit more orange for my edges. I'm not going to do the full page, because that's going to be, you know, there's a time suck as it is for you to watch this video. Hopefully this is helpful. I think this should help you dodge any real bullets, that, you know, any major issues that are going to come up. Um, should be a pretty straightforward day. Thank you so much again for helping out. I'll have these sponges laid out for you. The temperas are in cabinet number two on the tempera shelf. Uh, yellow, I bought some more yellow from ugh, from the art store here in the city because uh, I, I forgot to order more. Um, that really should be allocated for kindergarten uh, and not used for first grade yet because I want to make sure we have enough. I had to, I borrowed some earlier last week from preschool and felt kind of crummy about that. So I want to make sure that yellow stays in you know stays ready for that process. Cool part is, this is just a few stamps, right? I work fast, they work slower, that's okay. They'll be really, they'll be excited about the results. It's gonna look really cool. And when this dries, this is gonna become the background for the piece that we're moving on to, where we're practicing drawing our Ostromeos types figures, and we create a scene on top of this pattern. It's gonna look awesome. Um, thank you so much for helping out. Oh my God, it's a 10 minute video. Ugh.